गुड मॉर्निंग बीटूस गुड मॉर्निंग मैम मैम आई एम सो एक्साइटेड टू अटेंड माय फर्स्ट फाउंडर्स डे सेलिब्रेशन एज अ वेलमाइट वेल आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू योर क्लास एग्जीबिशन व्हिच फ्लेवर ऑफ इंडिया हैव यू पिक्ड अप मैम आर यूनानिमस चॉइस वाज द स्टेट ऑफ उत्तराखंड दैट्स नाइस बट व्हाई डिड यू चूज उत्तराखंड वेल since all of us are going to spend the next 7 years in the state we wanted to explore it more you see the pandemic prevented us from joining welm in march and we were curious to know how it would be like to live on the foothills of the himalayas in the beautiful dune valley i have never been to the mountains as i belong to the plains my cousin was now and ex velmite shared a lot about her trekking camping hiking and bird watching expeditions i wanted to explore the lovely birds and fascinating wildlife of uttarakhand my grandparents call it the land of gods with an intriguing mythological past you know they were curious about the chota char dham yatra and so we began our exciting journey of the discovery of uttarakhand guided by our seniors the priyasis who helped us compile our research well i am looking forward to seeing what you have put together the uttarakhand exhibition is about to begin डाली डाली फूलों की तुझको बुलाए रे मोसाफ मेरे उत्तराखंड में बादलों की ओर के ओर नी वादिया गीत सुनाए मीठे मीठे मेरे उत्तराखंड में आई एम सो एक्साइटेड Finally lockdown is over and I can join Wellam Hostel back once again. Even I am looking forward to joining Wellam. How long daddy? Apna mood dio. I wonder what kind of place Dehradun is. How different will it be from Mumbai? Wait till you reach there you will love it. I can already hear the hills alive with the sound of music. The land of gods, a paradise on earth, a temple of faiths, nature's eternal home. The soul of India in these lovely valleys lies the romance and poetry of life each tree has its own god each bush its spirit nestled on the foothills of the himalayas lies the spectacular and enchanting land of uttarakhand india's own switzerland no matter what country you belong to or what religion you believe in the magic of this land captivates every heart unleashing a new dose of life if you are seeking spiritual peace If you are looking for pollution free air to breathe and fog free winters full of sunshine and if you wish to taste the crystal clear waters of the Himalayas if you want to experience adventure and tourism 
if you wish to go skiing if you wish to hear the ferocious roar of a tiger if you wish to see the ethereal valley of flowers if you wish to experience simplicity of heart and hospitality and experience heaven on earth you need to visit this paradise Daddy look at those ladies dancing Yes Aisha it seems there is a fair going on in the parade ground Yes it happens every year Dad remember last year when you took me out for the Diwali outing we visited the Uttarakhand mela Daddy even I want to go to the Sure, no harm stopping here for a while. Uttarakhand Mele Me Swagat Che. Welcome to the Uttarakhand Mela. Today is 9th of November, the day when Uttarakhand became an independent state of India. You seem to be new to this place. Would you like to know more about this beautiful state? Yes, please. We are from Mumbai and we are in Uttarakhand for the first time. Very well then, miss. You are our special guest. Come and watch how this magical bioscope will tell you fascinating things about Uttarakhand. Wow. I have never seen a bioscope before. Hurry Aisha, let's watch. Devbhumi, Uttarakhand is the 27th state of India. It was established in November 2000 and was called Uttaranchal. Earlier, it was a part of Uttar Pradesh. Uttarakhand is divided into two divisions the Kamau division with six districts and the Gadwal division with seven districts Uttarakhand is categorized by two different climatic regions the hilly terrain and the plain region Summers in most of Uttarakhand are mostly pleasant in the monsoon season the state receives approximately 90% of its annual rainfall winters in uttarakhand are very cold with many places receiving regular snowfall the mountains stretch over the whole of uttarakhand making it look more stunning and mesmerizing they attract tourists to the snow capped mountains and the beautiful valleys and hills Nanda Devi East is known as the bliss giving goddess of the Garhwal Himalayas it is considered the second highest mountain in India above the magnificent and sacred site of Badrinath Nilkant is one of the eminent peaks making its mark in the Garhwal region of Uttarakhand The Bhagirathi peak the Gomukh and the Kedarnath peak are some other important mountains located in Uttarakhand The mountains are truly what makes this state so mesmerizing The beauty of the mountains is enhanced by the rivers they cut through the soft earth in their course and leave gorgeous valleys behind considered as the holy river in india the river ganga is a prominent attraction in the state this river originates in the gangotri glacier river yamuna 
originates from the Yamunotri glacier. Bhagirathi and Alaktanda are the two mainstream rivers of Ganga. Bhagirathi originates from Gomuk, forming a union with Alaknanda to create Ganga at Dev Prayag. The Doon Valley lies between two intermittent ranges of the Himalayas. The Outer Himalayas, that is the Shivalik Hills, and the Lesser Himalayas, known locally as the Missouri Range. The valley also forms a watershed between the Yamuna and Ganges river systems. Dehradun is the winter capital of Uttarakhand, while Karsin is the summer capital. Wow! Uttarakhand is so amazing! And so is your bioscope! Uncle, can you tell us how Dehradun got its name? Can you also tell us more about the historical places of Dehradun? Yes, of course! Bioscope, please tell the children. How Dehradun got its name? Dehra means Dera or home and Dun means valley. Dehradun is famous for its oil and natural gas cooperation ONGC, the Archaeological Survey of India and Indian Oil Cooperation Establishments, along with the Forest Research Institute, Rashtriya Indian Military College and the Indian Military Academy. In Skand Puran, Dehradun is the abode of Shiva. In ancient India during the Mahabharata epic era, Dronacharya, the great teacher of the Kauravas and the Pandvas, lived here, hence the name Dronanagar. When the son of the seven Sikh Guru, Guru Ram Rai, put his Dehra camp in his village, Dhamawala, the place was known as Dehradun. The annual Janda Fair is hosted each year in his memory on the fifth day after Holi. The Chinese pilgrim Fa Hien also mentions Kalsi, 56 kilometers from Dehradun, where a rock edict of the modern king Ashoka is located. The Lakhamandal cave is located here, where the Pandavas escaped from the deadly plan of the Kauravas to burn them alive in their Lakshagre. The Jonsa tribes claim to be descendants of Pandavas and reside in the Jonsa Babur district. Karan Ashram, also known as the birthplace of Emperor Bharat, is an important historical place in Kotwar. Once upon a time, Rishi Vishwamitra's intense meditation worried Indra, the king of heaven. To distract him, Indra sent his most beautiful Apsara Menaka to earth to distract the sage. And from their union was born a girl named Shakuntala. Shakuntala was left at Tushikan's ashram where she grew up in the forest. One day, while hunting, Dushyant, the king of Hastinapur, met Shakuntala. Although he married her, he soon deserted her. A son was born to Shakuntala, and she named him Bharat, after which our nation of India is named. Long time ago, a series of war broke out between the British East India Company and Nepal. The Battle of Nala Pani was the first of the Anglo-Nepalese Wars of 1814 to 1816. Although the Gurkhas were fierce warriors, they refrained from using any poisoned arrows. Neither the wells or the water resources were poisoned as they believed in a fair conflict. This won them the admiration and praise of the British even though they lost the battle. After the hard win of the East India Company, the British rulers recruited the Gorkhas to join their military forces and set up a memorial for the fallen Gorkha soldiers. 
The 1970 Chipko Andolan, a movement to save trees, was initiated by the women of Uttarakhand. It's a land of brave soldiers and has the Kumaon Regiment and the Garhwal Rifles. Uttarakhand's Major Somnath Sharma was India's first soldier to receive the Param Vir Chakra, the highest Indian gallantry award. He was awarded the medal posthumously for his bravery in the Kashmir operations in November 1947 in the Battle of Badga. In his last radio contact, he said, "The enemy is only fifty yards from us. We are heavily outnumbered. We are under devastating fire." I shall not withdraw an inch, but will fight to the last man and the last round. That's awesome! So we are actually standing on the pious land of Pandavas, Kauravas, and brave soldiers. Ha ha! So true. Did you know that the famous sage Vyas composed the Mahabharat in Uttarakhand? The state was once a part of Kuru and Panchal kingdoms. The Jonsari language is listed as an endangered language by UNESCO, as only the grandparents of the present generation know it. What about the culture, rituals, and festivals of the state? Do you know the state anthem of Uttarakhand is Bed Pako Bara Masa? Bear, look on the stage. They are performing the dance right now. is a flower festival also known as phool day or phulari celebrated during the months of january and february when native flowers are in full bloom children collect wild flowers and decorate the entrance of their homes and the adults reward them with food and money Harela, the day of green, is widely celebrated by people hailing from the agricultural background. It is also the day when farmers begin the sowing cycle. It is celebrated in anticipation of a good harvest. To mark the occasion, 
villagers make clay idols of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati, celebrating the wedding of the two deities. Seeds sown in places of worship in the household are offered to deities. This year, the people of Uttarakhand will include the sowing of medicinal plants in their plantation in view of the coronavirus pandemic. Uttarakhand's Chief Minister Tivendra Singh Rawat has requested people in Uttarakhand to plant a sapling each. Ghee Sakranti is celebrated in mid-September where ghee is the main component that is eaten by all. Janeo Punyo is celebrated on the same day as Raksha Bandhan. On this day, people replace their old Janeos with new ones. Diwali, also known as Bhagwal, is observed by playing a dangerous sport where dry cheer wood is tied with a rope, put on fire and swung around the body. The jewellery worn include Pichhora, which is worn for the first time when one is getting married. Annathuli, which is a nose ring, of which the Terhi Nath is one of the most distinguished jewellery pieces of Uttarakhand. Galabandh is a choker necklace. Shishpul is worn on the forehead. Hansuli is worn at social gatherings and festivals. Bahunchi is a gold bangle worn by married women. Ponji is an anklet which is different from the usual anklet. Bichua are beautiful toe rings with intricate designs. Kumauni women wear pichoras, a type of garment worn at weddings which is usually dyed at home and is yellow in colour. Even men wear kurta and kameez. During the Ganga Aarti, clothes worn include a ghagra along with the kameez which closely resembles the dress worn by Rajasthani women. The Ganga Aarti involves the chanting of hymns worshipping the river Ganges and is a spectacular event organized every year in Haridwar and Varanasi. <laughs> Religious sites like Yamanotri, Gangotri, Kedarnath and Badrinath are parts of the Chota Char Dham where people visit from all over the world. The Nanda Devi Yatra is famous as well and it marks the aspect of showing respect to Nanda Devi. It is also known as Himalayan Mahakumbh and is held once in every 12 years. Kailash Mansarovar Yatra is also very famous. It is a 53 km long yatra where the tourists witness the beauty of Kailash Mountains, the abode of Supreme Lord Shiva. Let us also plan a trip to Chota Char Dham next year. Yes, we shall surely plan one. I am so hungry. Mom, can we please go to the food stalls? Yes, of course. Let's go. It is almost lunch time. Good food leads to good places. One of the most delightful parts of the cuisine of Uttarakhand is the simplicity of the food which attracts tourists from all around India. Kafuli is a famous food prepared from spinach and fenugreek leaves, which even the doctors prescribe. It is an exotic dish prepared in an iron kadhai and complemented by hot steam rice. Since it is so divine in its taste and aroma, 
Garwal ka fanna has become a must food item in the menu card for every occasion that takes place in Uttarakhand. Panu is a dish which is famous mostly in the Garhwal region. It is rather complicated to prepare since it is made by mixing lentils of different varieties. It is a kind of a soupy dish served mostly with rice. When talking about delicacies, how can we not mention the desserts? Jangore ki kheer with its rich texture and the goodness of milk will leave you asking for more. Jangora is basically a type of millet which is the main ingredient of this dessert. Let's watch how it is prepared. The ingredients we need for jangore ka kheer. Milk, jangora, choice of your dry fruits and sugar. For making the jangora ka kheer, boil some milk and take a kadha. Add some ghee in it and jangora. Fry it well and then add the jangora in the milk. Mix the milk with the jangora until it gets until it combines together. Add some sugar and dry fruit. Now that you have enjoyed the Jangore Kiki, let's go to the Uttarakhand Wildlife and Tourism Stall. Yay! Time for some adventure! Do you know, Aisha? I have been to some amazing IAVP treks in the hills during our midterms. The state is home to some of the most exciting and adventurous tracks in India. It has shot to fame among adventure lovers due to its hilly terrains and dense forests. A perfect topography for thrilling adventures like trekking, rafting and camping. Along with its beautiful landscape and tranquil environment, Uttarakhand is also the seat of the age-old practice of healthy living called yoga. According to legends, Lord Shiva was the first yogi residing in the Himalayas. Rishikesh is the yoga capital of India. It draws a large number of Indians and foreigners every year to learn yoga. In February 1968, the Beatles embarked on their famous discovery of India to study meditation with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Now, 50 years later, India is rediscovering the Beatles, or at least the tourism potential of the world's most famous rock band seeking salvation in the country today. Wellam Girls is one of the few schools of India which offers training in Ayanga Yoga. Ayanga Yoga is named after the world-renowned yoga teacher Sri BKS Ayanga. It is a very scientific and meticulous style of yoga which places emphasis on precision and alignment. Wellamites undertake five different levels of exams, Arambic being the first one and Praman Patra being the last. Many Wellamites are successfully running their own yoga centers in India and abroad after getting trained in the basic skills of Iyengar Yoga in school. Apart from 
Sports Yoga and Adventure Sports Uttarakhand is certainly amongst the finest places for wildlife tourism in India. There are 12 national parks and wildlife sanctuaries in Uttarakhand that cover about 13.8% of the total area. Forests are the life support systems of the planet. We humans also depend on forests from the air we breathe to the food we eat. The Garhwal region in Uttarakhand state is blessed by mother nature with its beautiful valleys, snow-capped mountain peaks, lush forests and hundreds of animal and bird species. Some of the wildlife predominant here are the elephants, tiger, leopard, bear, cheetah, sambar, wild boar and kakar. The district is rich in avian fauna like pheasants, partridges, pigeons and doves of various kinds which are the chief game birds. The pheasants generally seen in the district are Kalij, Koklas, Cheers and Monal. Situated in Nainital, the Jim Corbett National Park is known to provide shelter to the endangered Bengal tigers. In 1936, it was declared as the first tiger reserve in mainland Asia, which aims to protect three of the five terrestrial species, namely the tiger, the Asian elephant and the great one-horned rhinoceros. The famous man-eater tiger of Champavat holds a place in the Guinness Book of World Record as it killed 450 people. He was finally killed by Jim Corbett, a hunter turned naturalist who was instrumental in establishing the Jim Corbett National Park in 1936. It is located in Nainital district and the Pori Gudwal district of Uttarakhand. The thrilling experience of forest safari, the nature walks or trekking in the forest organized by expert guides in the dense forest of Corbett are the most sought after adventure activities of Corbett. River rafting on the Kosi River that flows beside the Corbett National Park is quite popular and attracts tourists and nature lovers alike. Located in the Kumau region of Uttarakhand, Saad Tal, as per its literal meaning, is a group of seven freshwater lakes, encompassed by the dense forest of oak and pine trees. It is among the few freshwater ecosystems of India. Saad Tal is probably the most popular bird watching destination in Uttarakhand. Unique fauna of Saat Tal includes kingfishers, blue-throated and brown-headed barbets, golden-throated barbet and many more. Uttarakhand became the second state after Maharashtra to have a state butterfly, the common peacock. There are two butterfly parks with over 500 species in the Garhwal and Kumau region. The state animal of Uttarakhand is the musk deer, also known as Kasturi Mrig. It is endangered because of its musk gland, which is used to make perfume. Musk is also used to make cosmetic products and Asian medicine. The state bird, the Himalayan monarch, is also the national bird of Nepal. The crest of male Himalayan monarchs is very valuable among poachers. It is thought to bring status to its wearer and is a symbol of authority. Rhododendron or Buranch is a Uttarakhand state tree which has medicinal properties and is popular as a squash during summer. Brahma Kamal, the state flower, is attributed to Brahma, the god of creations, hence named Brahma Kamal, Brahma's lotus. It is known to bloom after sunset and just once a year. 
It is said to be good luck and prosperity and is offered in many holy shrines including Kedarnath, Badrinath and Tunganath. The flower is highly valued in Tibetan medicine and Ayurveda for its healing properties. The golden mahashir or the tiger among the fish lives in the fast moving waters of the Himalayan foothills. Assam Conservation Reserve stretches from the Assam River to its confluence with the Yamuna River. It has recently been declared as a Ramsar site and a biodiversity hub that supports 330 species of birds, including 40 plus species of migratory birds and fish. One can be lucky to catch the sight of the critically endangered red headed vulture white trumped vulture and bears poachered. It also supports large congregations of migratory birds like red crested poachard and reddy shelled duck and is a known feeding, spawning, migrating site for over 40 fish species. Birds, therefore, are an integral part in the life of a Velamite, as the school emblem is a kingfisher and all the houses are also named after birds, which were prevalent on campus. What a refreshing Buranjka Sharbat! It is so soothing and refreshing. Yesterday, I saw the rhododendron tree whose flowers are used to extract the Puranj juice. The Himalayan monal is the most beautiful bird I have ever seen. My teacher told me that it is the national bird of Nepal. I will never forget the safari. The tiger cubs and the majestic elephants were simply amazing. Dad, are there other boarding schools in Uttarakhand as famous as Wellem Goals? Yes, Sasha. In fact, Dehradun is known as the school capital of India. The fresh and healthy environment of the hills makes it an ideal place for students to perform better in fields like engineering, management, medicine, pharmacy and design. In fact, there are ample reasons why foreigners are drawn to the state. It gives a boost to the economy of the state. At the same time, there are drawbacks. More and more population, pollution and developmental activities disturb the delicate balance between man and environment and yearly natural calamities like floods and landslides during the rainy season disrupts the lives of people. Let us visit a village today as I want you to see the local art and craft industries as well as the farms where basmati rice, wheat, soya bean, ground nuts, coarse cereals, pulses and oil seeds are cultivated along with fruits such as apples, oranges, pears, peaches, lychees and plums. You can also see the Gharat, the traditional Himalayan water mill. Bandio, 
घर द्वार लगे रान उजाड़ तू आ जाओ पहाड़ उत्तराखंड इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग फास्ट पेस चेंजेस इन दी प्रोसेस पीपल आर माई ग्रीटिंग टू अर्बन एरियाज abandoning villages and giving up traditional methods of livelihood including farming the pandemic is a clarion call for the natives to return to their villages that they had once deserted and abandoned an organization called green is making an effort to stop migration an organization called hesco the himalayan environmental studies and conservation organization and a few other ngos are making an effort to stop migration by providing a platform for natural and organic farm produce as well as boosting the village tourism with the interference of ngos and government aid many rural areas in uttarakhand are making their living by selling organic products handicrafts and homestays While the urban people in Uttarakhand entertain themselves by going to the cinema or watching TV or indulging in modern sports, the rural gentry still enjoys organizing fairs, performing folk dance, and devoting time in traditional art and craft. Wellam girls students have also been part of a residential IAYP project by working at village Chuklapur. under the guidance of an ngo hesco headed by padmashri dr anil joshi students learned the significance of applying knowledge of environmental sciences and simple technologies to bring consistent development to the rural areas of the sub himalayan region the girls stayed at village shuklapur and undertook two main projects the first was the construction of a toilet and the second was working on the kitchen gardens of the assigned families it provided them with a perfect platform to discover and understand their personal selves in an in- unfamiliar environment giving them a sense of the work which needs to be done in rural areas and what can be done to alleviate living conditions of rural women So how was your experience of village life Galwali women are so hard working yet simple and ever smiling Mom why can't we leave Mumbai and settle in the hills I will not have any asthmatic attacks as there is clean fresh air here Not a bad idea But first, let's hurry as we need to drop both of you to Wellam. Yeah! I am so excited to be a Wellamite. I am looking forward to spending the next 7 years of my life here in Uttarakhand. Goodbye online classes. Welcome Dev Bhumi. Welcome Wellam. डाली डाली फूलों की तुझको बुलाए रे मोसाफ मेरे उत्तराखंड में बादलों की ओर के ओरनी वादियां गीत सुनाए मीठे मीठे मेरे उत्तराखंड में हो पिजोरे पिजोरे मेरे पहाड़ को
the B tools was a truly enriching experience, which taught me a lot about teamwork and leadership, and inculcated patience. I had an interactive experience with the B tools. Not only did it increase my knowledge about the state of Uttarakhand, but also enhance my leadership qualities and taught me how to be patient. I enjoyed time working with the B tools because they were extremely cooperative and enthusiastic, and they were always willing to mend their errors and learn new things. Working with the B tools was a great experience as they were very accommodating and cooperative. It was great working with the B tools. They were so young yet so tech savvy. They attended every meeting. They were on time and made sure the work went smoothly. Thank you, B tools, for making me learn so many new things. Working with the B tools was an extremely new and fun experience. Uh, they were extremely helpful, efficient, and diligent. Even though they were so young, I had a lot to learn from them, and I hope they could learn a bit from me. Thank you. Helping the B tools was a really unique experience for me, especially because it was online. At first, I thought it would be challenging to coordinate with everyone, but with the cooperation of the B tools as well as their pre-SE in charges, everything was a smooth ride.